Welcome, students, to another video lecture with Mr. Kinnett. Uh, in this lesson, we're building off our previous lesson where we learned about how to find the slope. And we are now going to find the easiest method for graphing any linear equation. Remember, that's a straight line. Um, so we learned how to use the table method for anything. It was really slow for linear equations. So there is a shortcut that we're going to learn. And the shortcut comes from a form of a line called slope-intercept form. And uh, start thinking about how mathematicians are really literal when they name things. Go ahead and pause here and copy down what you see. Okay, welcome back. So our essential question is, what is slope-intercept form of a linear equation? So what is this form of a line? And how can we use it for graphing? Again, this is going to be our fastest way to graph something um, as long as it's in slope-intercept form. And that's what this next page is a little bit about. It's, it's teaching us what slope-intercept form is. So the generic formula for slope-intercept form is y equals m times x plus b. Now remember, what variable did we use for slope in our previous lesson? Yeah, you're right. It's the m. So this formula looks like it has four variables. It's only going to end up with two variables whenever we use it. Our goal is to always solve for m, which is the slope. So you're starting to see how mathematicians name this. And this b, that's not a 6, um, is going to be the location of the y-intercept. So there are some important things about this slope-intercept form. Very literal. They named it slope for the m and intercept for our y-intercept. Um, so this is just one form of a linear equation. In fact, there are three forms of how to write a linear equation. And again, this is just going to be the easiest one for us to graph from. So we're always going to try and get the y by itself if we don't have a y by itself. And you'll see that later on in our lesson. This b stands for the y-intercept. And remember, when you intercept something, that's when you cross it. So the y-intercept is where this line is going to cross our y-axis. And it has the ordered pair always of 0, comma, whatever b is, that number there. The 0 is the x-coordinate. And that's because when you cross the y-axis, you're on the zero of the x-axis. So moving on here. Uh, go ahead and pause here. And I'm going to actually show the next two lines. Leave some room for these examples. Uh, continue the facts in this upper left below our information on slope-intercept form. And uh, pause here and copy down what you see. Okay, welcome back. So I'm going to go back just one page here so I can still talk about slope-intercept form a little. So it's important to realize that slope-intercept form only exists if y is all by itself. If y is not all by itself, just like this example is going to look like, notice the y is not by itself, we can't do these shortcuts you're about to learn. These shortcuts only work if the y is all by itself. If y is by itself, then we can start doing these steps. Then the slope will always be the coefficient, that number, on the x. And the y-intercept, if y is by itself, will always be that added to the x term. And we're going to learn that, remember, when there's a subtraction sign, we're going to see that as a negative number. So the next part of our lesson here is just trying to get us to be able to identify where the slope is in something and where the y-intercept is. So there's about seven examples. I'm going to do one and two on uh, with you, and then we're going to do three through seven in class. And six and seven are starred because, strangely, they're not difficult problems, but many students struggle on them. So in problem one, which number, can you please circle the number that's in the slope's location? Yeah, I think you may have circled this negative 3, the coefficient of x. And we're able to do that because the y was all by itself. Now please circle the y-intercept in this problem. Okay, nice. That's this positive 2. So... These two things we have here, neither one of them will be put together as one ordered pair. We have actually found two different things. M, the slope, will
will be negative 3. And our y-intercept, that b letter in this formula, is equal to 2. This y-intercept, remember, is the ordered pair 0, comma, 2. That b always goes in the second location. A common mistake students make is they try to make the ordered pair negative 3, comma, 2, because those are two numbers we pulled from this formula. That is incorrect. M, the slope, is how much a line goes up or down, and B is where we cross the y-axis. So go ahead and try and circle the slope for problem 2 and circle the y-intercept for problem 2. Nice. I think you're getting better at identifying where these things are. Our slope for problem 2 is 1 half, and our y-intercept in problem 2 it is negative 7. I really hope you circled that, that sign there. And that's because we add its opposite. Remember this from lessons in chapter 2. So that's really actually a negative number. So our y-intercept is a negative 7 and would have the ordered pair 0, comma, negative 7. Notice we placed it in that second location. Again, we're going to do problems 3 through 7 in class. So I'm going to jump a couple slides ahead. Can you please pause and copy down what you see? Okay, welcome back. What we are about to learn in this part of the lesson is the fastest way to graph a linear equation as long as we are in slope-intercept form. And remember, to be in slope-intercept form, you must have, yes, yes, you're right, that y all by itself. Notice I'm reminding you of this a lot because students make the mistake of using these shortcuts when y is not already by itself. So to help myself in this problem, what I do first is I list the slope and the y-intercept on the page. And just like those previous problems we did, the slope is right next to that x since y is all by itself, and the y-intercept is this number back here. So I'm going to write them down on the bottom here. m equals negative 4 thirds, and our y-intercept is the number 2, which takes on the ordered pair 0, 2. Step three is to plot the y-intercept. So we're going to use this ordered pair, 0, 2, and place a dot there on our coordinate plane. You know, my, my board's a little off, so make sure you put it at 0, 2. Now, this is how we graph using slope. Mathematicians love to call the top part of this slope the rise, and that's because it's our change in our y variable, and they call the bottom number of our slope the run. And that's because it's our change on the x-axis. So just like when we had translations in chapter 11, this is very similar. When we have a negative number for our y variable, or our y change, sorry, we're going to have to go down 4. So I'm going to count down 4 from my y-intercept. So using the y-intercept as our starting point, we're going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3. Four. None of these are lines. I'm just showing you by counting on the paper. To get an ordered pair, though, we need a y and the x. So we're going to run 3 to the right from where we just counted down 4. 1, 2, 3. And we're going to place our second ordered pair right there. One more time. How I got there was I was at the y-intercept, and I went down 4 since I had a negative 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then I ran positive 3, which was to the right, because it was positive, and then I placed the dot. And why this is so easy is we just did a shortcut for plotting the entire linear equation with just one ordered pair and the slope of the line. Please make sure to use a straight edge when you do the next part of the problem. We're going to connect these two ordered pairs with a straight edge to create the line's answer. And there it is. Remember, this line goes on forever, so we should have arrows on each side. So what do you think? Graphing from slope-intercept form, not too challenging. Okay, so we are going to jump ahead. And we are going to learn how to create slope-intercept form from a graph. So we're going to learn how to use that skill we just did, not forward, but backwards. 
So go ahead and pause here and copy down this problem that you see. And remember, I made that line really thick and large because you have to use the same ordered pairs as me for this example. Go ahead. All right, welcome back. So we're actually going to evaluate this problem in class because I don't well, want to make this note too long for you. Leave space to solve this problem. We're going to need some space. And the last part of our lesson here goes over how we solve for y or how we get y by itself if it's not by itself. Again, pause here and copy down what you see because we're going to evaluate this together in class. Okay, welcome back. I hope when you look at this problem, you start to think it's an equation. And we have some skittles to solve equations. So before we go over this lesson, you may want to review those steps we solve equations for from Chapter 8. Oh, yes, you're right. It's Piam. Okay, so if you have any questions, please write your questions in the questions columns. We'll go over those last two steps in class together. And thank you so much for joining me on another video lecture.